I have chosen a very lighter topic. No need to be afraid because you have, I know very well, people will not select this topic. Everybody will be talking only technical thing, how to publish, how to start with research design, how to uh, do the plagiarism, everything. So I have chosen a very different topic. And I promise you, at the end of the topic, you will definitely, or during my topic, you will definitely remember one person who has created a major change in your life. I promise you with that. With that note, I will move on to my presentation. Okay, so uh, I just want to convey something else in research. So when a boy attains uh, uh, 20 years of age, or 25 years, let us take 25 years, because 20 is too early. 25 years of age, he wants a partner, right? So how he will search for a partner? Very good looking, beautiful, well educated and uh, uh, earning, earning girl, right? So at 25 years, this will be the conditions. So two years he keeps searching, not, uh, he didn't get uh, any suitable partner. So what it, he does, he removes any one thing, very good looking, beautiful, okay, remove beautiful, very good looking, well educated, well uh, salaried girl. So after two years, again, again one, one option will go off. Good looking will go. Then finally, he will seek for a girl. Right? But this is not the case in research. Research is just the opposite. So whenever you meet any young researcher, my topic is actually on mentoring. Like how we can guide, see, uh, every time whenever we are uh, working, we would have started our career as a subordinate. We always blame our boss. Now I am the boss. I started blaming my subordinates. So when we are students, we blame our teachers. When we become teachers, we blame our students. So this is a cyclic thing. Even you can connect it with parenting also in our normal life. So same way, mentor and mentee relationship in a PhD, uh, at a PhD level is very, very, very important. That's why I said my topic will bring you some person in front of you. Either you will remember your mentor or you will remember your mentee. So research is, oh yes, research is just an opposite. It's not, we, we are not going to cut down, we are going to add on. You will start with a girl and then add on. So likewise, you start with a research, a simple research, then you add on so, so that you can convert this good academic uh, research practices even into excellent academic research practices. So they are telling, think out of box, out of box. Why should we think out of box? Because there is no end user. I have leftover rice in my house. She gave example of biryani. I'll give some other example. I have a leftover rice in my house. Who will eat that? Nobody will eat. So same leftover rice. I add some onions. I add some chopped chilies. I'm actually good in cooking rather than teaching or research. So that's why some or the other way I'll convey this to the audience. So uh, I add some onions, I add some chilies, I add some corn, I add some all masalas. Of course, I add some cheese to it, then make a ball and some binder, potato something, make a ball, immerse it in maida paste and then coat it with something, fry it and then give, it will vanish in a second. And I name it, I rename it as cheese balls. So now I call it as creativity, innovation. I can patent that. I can go for process patent. I can go for product patent because it's my product. Even the process was different. I can add anything in that. The process of doing that is different. So process patent I'll get, product patent I'll get. So this is the basic concept of research. Once we understand that, not a mere extension of whatever we have done 20 years back. No. I have learned so many things in this 20 years of my career. I started only with pharmaceutical analysis, MPharm, but I am now good in biostatistics, which nobody taught me. Biostatistics using Excel? No, that is not enough. Again, I am learning now R software. So we have to learn. 
vertical learning as well as horizontal learning. That's the reason I do a lot of online courses and update myself so that we can be an inspiring role model for our mentees. So this is the topic what I have chosen, mentoring. Because uh, as I said, instead of blaming, instead of considering everyone as a competitor, let us collaborate. Let us welcome the PhD scholars, handhold them. But at the same time, we should not forget one thing. It's like kite. A father and a son, both, they went for a kite festival. So the son is first time he is seeing the kite. He is very excited to see all the colorful flights, uh, kites. He want the kite to be flown very high. So he, he, uh, he told his father, father don't hold that uh, thread. You are holding that thread in your hand. That's the reason why kite could not able to fly higher. Then his father said, no, no, this is necessary. But he didn't un listen, he didn't understand. So he, uh, his father said, okay, I'll leave the uh, thread. So once the moment he left the thread, it flew to a certain distance higher than the original one. But after two, three seconds, it fell down. So this is what is the relationship between a mentor and a mentee. Actually, I have shared the video on that particular thing. It's a very interesting video. If possible, we can see at the end. And uh, uh, every time, whenever we finish some presenting something in a forum, and then we play a video, people don't remember those half an hour session, whatever I say. They only remember the video and they say, Madam, that video was very nice. So uh, I want to take that credit in the beginning. So I have told at least the uh, few, uh, just a gist or outline of that particular video in the beginning. So in the end, you will definitely watch that video. So mentoring, why it is important? Yes. So why mentoring is important? Because it enhances the productivity of a particular child. No doubt in it. And you will definitely get a career satisfaction. So the second option is you will influence the researcher. Uh, actually, we are targeting only on the requirements. When, whenever the research scholar enrolls in a PhD uh, program, we give a target, okay, you, within three years you have to publish these three papers or four papers, you have to present in a conference. Only those targets are given, but instead of that, we can handhold them and tell them what impact this is going to have in future in their career. So, uh, third one is, th it can strengthen the decision making around the academic persistence and definitely this will also improve the re retention of the young faculty. Many of the faculty are moving away because I have seen many people, they enroll themselves in a, a PhD program after two, three years, they leave it and go. So that is not a healthy practice. So it's mutual. It, I'm not saying only the mentor should adjust, both the mentor and the mentee should adjust over it. So what are the five uh, qualities of good research mentors? So these are the five uh, qualities. I am not going to go into detail, at least an uh, outline point, uh, like we should respect uh, their views, we should listen to them, we should give time for them, and then be supportive. Don't consider uh, the PhD scholar as a competitor. They should be given all the support, whatever is required. and. Uh, they should also be communicated with available facilities. What is there? What? So interdisciplinary research, we should facilitate them with interdisciplinary research. And of course, there should be a honest relationship between each other. That is also very much required. And uh, these are the uh, skills that are required for a mentor and a mentee. And uh, there are common skills that is required for both of them. Both of them should listen to each other. It's not like one way. So we have already moved from teacher to facilitator. There is a difference between a teacher and a facilitator. A teacher-centric -cent teaching to student-centric teaching. We have already moved to that. We have started uh, exploring the gamification of the concepts. So we are trying new 
perspective in we are trying to bring out new perspectives in education but as a phd researcher as a scholar once they go out of your institute make sure they are skill filled they should learn all the skills that is uh, available in the institute so uh, these are the qualities i think uh, so uh, what are the these are the common qualities which both mentors and mentee should possess so they should listen actively each one should give some uh, time to listen to their own mentor and mentee and definitely building trust is another important thing it's like a marriage a uh, husband should have trust over the wife wife should de so definitely it's a it's a journey for 3 4 years so there should be some trust that should be built and definitely they should encourage them to take part in everything and uh, identify their goals and current reality these are the common things because sometimes uh, phd scholars they come up with some idea which is which may be the extended idea of already what they have done because every pg scholars they do some research and then only they enroll for phd so sometimes that should not repetitive things should not happen so it should meet the goals of mentor as well as the mentee then critical skills for mentors what are the critical skills that are required so they should develop the capability of that particular candidate it should be definitely the mentor should be very inspiring and uh, they should provide a correct feedback so whenever there should be a correction that should be made it it's not that uh, you will say polished you if it is wrong you should say outright or into the face that it is wrong it is a mistake done by the candidate and you should give a chance for them to correct it and managing the risk sometimes uh, there will be lot of risk that are involved when you support your own phd scholar there will be lot of risk that may be involved so that also every mentor should manage so they should also allow them to interact with other departmental faculties and facility should be used they should be allowed to take over some session they should be allowed to encourage to organize some events and uh, they should be introduced to industry so that after completion of phd they'll get some opportunity as well so uh, these are the critical skills of mentees so definitely mentees should acquire whatever the mentors are saying and uh, they should uh, learn from them quickly and respond to that and they should also show some initiative it's not that every time they will sit simply and uh, wait for the mentor to give their comments so they should also make some initiative and uh, there should be absolute follow ups they should meet their mentors regularly and update them with what they are doing so that is from the mentees end and uh, definitely the relationship between the mentor and mentee is very very important so it should uh, because the journey is for 3 to 4 years so uh, mentoring philosophy components this is personal approach this is needed because when seven or eight of them are enrolled under single mentor each and every one will not have same capacity or capability so there should be a personal approach made for each and every one personal attention and whenever anything is told by one student that should not be shared with other mentor or other mentees as well that is also very important that's why we said both of them should build a trust with each other but absolutely whatever we do that should focus only for the overall goal not only for the completion of the phd program it should be the overall goal they together they should achieve something innovative so personal beliefs so uh, when we mentor them we can also include some personal beliefs like we follow certain principles so that can also be implemented that in a right way right way it should be done in a right way so there will be definitely some barriers and challenges that a mentor or mentee should analyze and then mentor should help the mentees should to overcome those barriers and challenges and reach the goal so uh, this is a difference between the supervisor and a mentor just uh, simply be a supervisor rather than that so i think everyone will like to call 
you as a mentor rather than a supervisor because supervisor is very tough face task oriented so if not done you may make them to stand outside so don't do that so always there is a solution for anything so let that be a mentor so everyone turn into a mentor so roles of mentors and mentees again so when this is followed there will be a long lasting relationship between a mentor and mentee i hope your mentor or your mentee will come into picture now and uh, you will be thinking of what what kind of uh, things you uh, uh, you received from your mentor and what kind of things you are giving away for your mentees just think of again and uh, do only what is ethics and what is required so where can the problem arise in a relationship actually this is also applicable in parenting this is also applicable in husband and wife relationship also so lack of experience and confidence and a lack of time if you don't you should provide some time for each and every mentor because that's a commitment we have made with that commitment only all seven of us have enrolled under us so lack of institutional and financial uh, support and then overall personal and controlling uh, mentor so not to be too controlling so that's what it should be like a thread they should not feel the thread is there that is controlling them they should try to fly high and high so lack of classroom structure and difference in beliefs values so that is also a very problematic one between the mentor and mentee so nothing can be avoided all this will definitely be there with each and every mentor and mentee only thing is this can be overcome or the percentage of problems can be minimized if we follow all this so this are some of the common issues what everybody faces inaccessible mentors as someone else also was saying whenever a mentee sends a mail or nowadays they send by whatsapp everything is sent by whatsapp so at least we should reply we should make time to reply that so unmotivated mentees so just for name sake they want a phd just for promotion or just for the matter of finishing that particular program so that is also a very big issue inadequate direction they don't know what to do when to do where what not to do so inadequate direction is again another very big problem between the mentor and mentee so ethical concerns again so this has to be taken care of in each and every part of our life so integrity is most important so these are the best practices to resolve identify an appropriate space for discussion every every week or every month i have a discussion agree to the ground rules we have to follow the rules or norms of ugc and the university and whenever they come clearly it should be described these are the requirements and what is their limitation what is your limitation where you can help where they should do on their own everything can be clearly told and listen to their persons other persons perspective also every time it's not like you only will say they will follow it's not that just because they are menti they should follow you at least uh, sometimes we should also listen to them be flexible in creating a solution so sit together discuss and then find a solution and then be flexible in finding a solution over that just two more slides don't worry so this are mentor traits that promote independence so trust foresight and ability these are the three major requirements for mentor and uh, this is for mentee persistence confidence and flexibility they sh they cannot say like i have learned only this i will do only on this particular aspect my phd will be only on this It, it's a rare opportunity for them to transform themselves and learn new skills so definitely they should allow themselves to be flexible and then they can make those changes so these are some of the milestones for uh, so i have given like Uh, this is again from uh, one of the article so when you begin the relationship at the time of enrollment we have to make sure what is the goals uh, tell them clearly what are the things they have to complete another 6 months you have to complete your research methodology paper another one year we expect you to publish at least one review article everything can be 
told very clear at the beginning itself and there can be a monthly review between the mentor and mentee i am talking of all this up between mentor and mentee other than the university norms university will have their own norms doctoral committee institutional review board two doctoral committee meetings one research seminar so they will have a lot many other rules so that has to be followed other than that this are all are between mentor and mentee then after a year to encourage them to lead a session or organize a event so that they will also get confidence they will also know where they stand and uh, yearly and until end frequently revisit the expectations and whether you should see whether they have fulfilled the goals or not both of you together have reached the goals or not so with that note so uh, we all cannot forget we all cannot become like them Uh, arjuna and krishna a very good mentor and mentee relationship but at least we can keep them in our heart and then follow their footsteps and uh, i i hope uh, definitely you would have remembered a person thanks for that and uh, thanks for this wonderful opportunity again thank you